What's up everybody? Welcome to Spring Hills Online. My name is Kiki and I'm a part of our team here and I just wanna say we are so excited that you've chosen to join us for church today. Hey, if this is your first time joining us or you're new around here, we would love to get connected with you. Just text Spring Hills to 21,000 and when you do, our digital connection card will show up in your text messages and it's a great first step in getting plugged in. We have a great service plan for you today. Pastor Brett is bringing an encouraging message and we can't wait. But before we get there, let's get started with some worship.
and all I see is the battle You see my fig tree When all I see is the mountain You see mountain moon And as I walk through the shadow Your love surrounds me There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. So when I fight, I will fight on my knees, with my head lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet, I sing through the night. God, the battle belongs to you. And if you are for me, who can be against me? Yeah. For Jesus, there's nothing impossible. Stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. In almighty forces, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows, you win every battle, nothing can stand against the power of our God, in almighty forces, you go before us, nothing can stand against the power of our God, you shine in the shadow, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. So when I fight, oh, when I fight, I will fight on my knees. With my hands lifted high, oh God, the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night, oh God. Battle belongs to you. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with. Of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear, and I am a child of God. I'm no From my mother's womb 
online. My name is Kiki. If you're just now joining us, we are so excited that you're here with us today. That was an incredible time of worship and we're excited now to jump into another installment in our current series, Living 12. Check this out. Welcome to Spring Hills Church Online. How are you doing today? Hey, I want to encourage you. I hope you're doing all right. 
and uh, that this message particularly helps you and sort of moves you along during these difficult days we're in. How long is this going to last? We'll be okay. God's in charge. He's on his throne. He is Lord. So be encouraged by that. Can I pray with you as we dive into today's message? Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this new day. Thank you for your word. We pray together that you will speak to us and your spirit will move us and we will be your people and the light of the world in Christ that you would have us to be. So use us and encourage us. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. All right, well, get your Bible and turn to Romans 12, and we're going to look at verse 13 uh, in our sermon today. Romans chapter 12 and verse 13. I want to read it for you. It says this, Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Let me read that for you again. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Okay, so we're going to talk about those two things, contributing to the needs of the saints and seeking to show hospitality. But to set this verse in its context, let's go back and review verses 1 and 2, because verses 1 and 2 of Romans chapter 12 really is the basis and foundation of this entire chapter. You could even say that Romans 12, 1 and 2 is the basis or foundation for your Christian living, your Christian life. It says this, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. And the key phrase, let me bring it out to you again, is that all the appeal of Romans 12, contributing to the needs of the saints, as we're going to talk about, showing hospitality, all the appeal he's going to make is based on and because of the mercies of God that have been shown to you and to me. We offer ourselves to God to serve Him, to love others, to be part of His church. We offer ourselves to Him because He's been merciful to us. As John says in his first letter, we love because He first loved us. And your Christian living, your Christian life is the overflow of gratitude, thankfulness, love that you feel towards God because of all he's done for you. He saved you by his grace. Nothing that you've done or I've done earns us a place in heaven, earns us salvation. It's by God's wonderful grace. And God showed his love for us in that Christ came and shed his blood on the cross to pay for our sins, to atone for our sins, to reconcile us to God, to open the way for access to God, a relationship to God. God so loved you and me that he sent his son to do that. And so thank you, God, for saving me, delivering me, forgiving me. And now I just, I offer myself to you. I want to be the person that you've called me to be now, this new life. And that's what verse 2 of Romans 12 is about. Do not be conformed to this world. You're no longer a part of it, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. When I say that you're not oh, no longer of this world, you're in the world and we're to minister to the world and we're to love the world and the people in it for the sake of Christ, but you're no longer conformed to the world. That's not you anymore. Your old self died with Christ. You were buried with Christ, the old self, the old you, and you've been raised with Christ to a whole new life. And God is working in you, transforming you by the power of his Holy Spirit and as you're renewing your mind. You're renewing your mind in God's truth. You're thinking differently about life, reality. You're thinking differently about everything. And that's where we get to in, in Romans uh, 12, 13, is now we're to contribute to the needs of the saints, all right? There's a lot there. Contribute to the needs of the saints. This is what, this is you now, 
okay? This is me. Now, what does it mean to contribute to the needs of the saints? Well, when you first hear that, you might think of, well, it means that I should give a little money to the pot that could help some people, you know? And uh, certainly that could be part of it. You know, here at the church, we have a love fund that we, we have. You've given to it, a love fund to help support people in their time of need. That's really important. But I want to say it's much bigger and richer and deeper than that because of what the word contribute means. In the original language, the word contribute uh, is a word that means to really participate or be a partaker with. All right, so it's the Greek word koinonia. Some of you, some of you have heard that word, koinonia, you know. Um, and it means to really share in and be connected to, committed to other people. So I, if I was doing a translation, I might translate it this way. Be a partaker, be a participant, be involved in the needs of others in the church. All right? In other words, get involved. He says that we're to contribute to the needs of the saints. The saints. Who are the saints? Well, I'm not a saint. Well, yes, you are. According to Scripture, a saint is somebody who has been chosen and set apart by God. When you came to Christ... As your Savior, you heard the call of God, you confessed your sins to Him, you invited Jesus Christ to be your Savior, to come into your life. It was God who was at work calling you, calling you, and separating you to Himself. That's what a saint is or a holy one, separate to God. That's you. And so we're to... We are to partake and be involved and participate in the life of fellow believers when they have a need, when they have a need. That's the whole idea, participating or contributing to the needs of the saints. And, of course, it says here that they, it's to be their needs, all right? We are to participate and help them in their needs, not necessarily their wants, <laughs> uh, but their needs. This is, this is big because what do you need that God may use me to help meet? You know, what need do you have that God might use me to help meet? Over in Galatians chapter 6, it says we're to bear one another's burdens. Well, people have a lot of burdens. You know, there are different burdens. Some burdens we have to bear ourselves, right? I mean, we just have to Take care of business ourselves. Other burdens are excessive burdens. And so we're, you're part of this family of God now with other saints, others that have been called out by God, believers. You're part of this family to meet needs, to bear burdens, to bring support, and to bring help. So the need could be a financial need. I mean, somebody literally doesn't have enough money for a place to live. That's a need. Or they don't have resources for food. There's a need. I mean, big ones. Um, clothing, no, you know, any of that. So you, you, uh, we have to do a little bit of application in this passage to our situation and our church and our surrounding uh, community and say to God, well, what are you saying to me, God? You want me to participate and be involved in the needs of fellow believers. What do they need? All right? And so we need to be alert to this. We need to be interested in this. We need to care about this. That's the way the first, uh, the first ch century church was. Uh, in the first century church... We have these words in Acts chapter 2 and verse 45. Listen to this. The first church now, first century, they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. So uh, you also, we read more about this uh, down in chapter 4 of the book of Acts, verse 32. Uh, now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common and were literally um, 
taking what they had. If they had extra houses or they had extra stuff or whatever, and they were, they were selling it and they were providing the money so that if any had need, they could be provided for. So it's this idea now in the new person, the new you, that's being transformed. You're part of the family of God, and you're really involved. I mean, you really care. You're really invested. And if there's a need you can meet, then you're going to meet it you got, because you care. See, uh, one's, one person's burden is shared by you. And uh, we, we all are to come alongside each other in this kind of way. Now, I want to point out to you that in the first century, <clears throat> the first century church, it wasn't a communistic approach or philosophy, okay? Let's make that really clear. What would communism be? Well, it would be that everybody sells everything, right? And then it becomes centralized and distributed equally, like that sort of, you know, platform. But that's not what was happening in the first century. It was, number one, according to need, right? And it says in the book of Acts that they, they had houses, each one they met, they met house to house. So people had houses. It wasn't um, sell everything and centralize the control and divvy it out. No, no, no. It was people voluntarily, willingly seeing a need and f with the love of Christ responding to it. And you and I had to do the same thing, which implies that we know each other well enough to respond to a need and to, to contribute to the saints I mean, that's why in a large church like ours, we have small groups and we get together and we share our lives and we fellowship together. We read God's Word and we get to know each other because it's in that small group that we can become aware of needs and burdens and people's lives and respond to them. Pray for them. Obviously, we pray for each other. But when there's a need, if God prompts us and we can meet it, then we should do that. We should do that. Um, so... The whole church, and I'd say this to you, you need to be in a small group in our church because you need to know people. You can't, we can't do everything for everybody. Well, number one, we don't know what all the needs are. We'd sure like to know what, what the, if you have a need, we'd like to know about it because there's somebody in our church, I'm sure, that could help meet it. But God wants to move us from being a spectator to being a contributor. Are you with me here? We're not just to be kind of watching the church happen. We're to be part of the life of the church. You have spiritual gifts that can support people and build them up and care for them and bear burdens. You have spiritual gifts. You have resources. So you get the idea that now in the new life, we're really, we're looking after people and caring about them. Another passage we have in 1 John chapter 3, verses 17 and 18, John really challenges us. First John uh, chapter 3, 17 says, But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Verse 18, Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. Okay? You get it. Involvement. The church family. I am, I am, I'm in this and I care. One writer says the church is something you belong to. It's a relationship. You're called to be part of a family with all the other people God has called. It is a family and you will only ever get to know God and his purpose for your life when you are in community with God's family. All right. Rick Warren talks about uh, bunny believers, bunny believers who hop from church to church, church shoppers and hoppers, you know, uh, church hoppers and shoppers. Uh, anyway, bunny believers, everybody, where never quite getting involved anywhere, just sort of dabbling here and dabbling there. That's not what God's calling you to do. And to present your body a living sacrifice to God, which is your worship, means you're in. Are you in? I mean, are you like, God, I'm committed. Listen, if you want to love the Lord Jesus Christ, and I know you do, you want to love him and you want to love God with your whole heart and soul and mind and strength, and I believe you do, you really want to love, then love the things that God loves. 
and hate the things that God hates. Love the things that God loves. Jesus Christ loves his church. He laid down his life for us. You know, this community of believers, God loves his church. You love his church as well by doing what you can as God leads you to meet the needs, all right? And I mentioned, let me give you one verse. I mentioned needs because sometimes we don't know, should I help this person or that person or what should I do? And two things about the needs part. Number one, he says it's the needs of the saints. All right, I think that as, a, as believers, first and foremost, we want to take care of the family of believers, all right? I mean, we're just, that's our priority. There are needs everywhere. They are. There are needs everywhere. And obviously, we can't meet every single need. But we are to zoom in on the needs of the saints, and those needs need to be uh, obviously legitimate. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10 says, So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially those who are of the household of faith. Do good to everybody, you know, but especially to those who are of the household of faith, which I think is the same thing he's saying, contributing to the needs of the saints, the household of faith. Prioritize yourself there. And uh, anyway, we're to meet needs. God will lead you in this, all right? God will lead you in this. I know it's not always easy to figure out what am I supposed to do. God will lead you. You just ask him. But the key thing is that you're available to serve the family of God, the body of Christ. All right, secondly, in this passage, he says then we're to, we're to, seek, we're to seek to show hospitality, all right? Seek to show hospitality. Now, again, on the surface, you, you look at that and you go, okay, what does that mean? What does that mean to you when you just see that phrase, seek to show hospitality? Uh, when I was a young Christian in church, we had the, uh, what they called the fellowship hall. And the pastor would say, after the service, you're invited to the fellowship hall, all right, where we're going to have fellowship and there'll be hospitality. And I remember I would go to the fellowship hall, and there was coffee, and there somebody had brought some cookies, and so we had coffee and cookies and light conversation, and then we were out of there, all right? But that's not hospitality. That's certainly not what fellowship, fellowship is much richer, as we have already talked about. But hospitality, the original Greek word for hospitality, the word that's translated is literally love of strangers. Okay, love of strangers. Over to the English, we translate it here as being, um, you know, hospitality. Uh, but it's, it's a love of strangers. When the first century church met, there were no, you know, holiday inns. There were no uh, hotels you could stay at. And so people, uh, fellow believers, would come into town for, for feast days or whatever it was. And believers were to reach out to them and take them in and care for them and love them and give them food and a place to stay. And sometimes people would literally just go out in the middle of town hoping somebody would invite them in. All right, just like sat there and, and hoped that somebody would invite them in. Well, as believers, we're to, we're to love those that we don't, we don't know that well, all right? They could be within the church. You could even expand it out. But we are to love people and include people and invite people in. There it is. And you say, in, into my home? Into my home? What are you saying? Well, if somebody needs a place to stay and you have a room available, then, you know, pray about that. God might, that might be it. Or just how about this? Loving strangers, showing hospitality is including people in our circle of friends, not excluding anybody. You know, not making, it, not making somebody feel like they're not a part of the, our little clique or group or whatever. No, no. We're, we're, to, we're to reach out. There's a good word for it. Reach out. And notice he says we're to seek, all right, to show hospitality. It's not just when, hey, the need arises. You're to seek it. I love that. You see how much stronger this is? You're to seek to show love for people that may be characterized as on the outside. Certainly it involves all people. As believers, we seek to love them. 
in the church family. We reach out to people. We ask them how they're doing. We care about them. We're seeking this. Strong word for seek, by the way. It's a word that's very strong. I mean, in its, in its definition, um, it means that we're to, uh, to it's, it's used, the same word is used uh, and translated as to pursue, uh, to, to persecute. Um, it's used over in the, the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 6, when the Apostle Paul describes himself as to his zeal, a persecutor of the church. Now, that's a negative context, right? It's a negative context. Persecuting, zeal. Here, it's positive. It's like we're really seeking hard with passion to include people and to love people uh, and to do good to people. More positive use is Philippians 3.12 in that same chapter in Philippians. Not that I've already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on. There it is. Press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. I am pressing, sometimes we say pressing in or pressing on or desire. Seek it. Seek it. All right? So um, who can you reach out to today in Christ's name? You know? I mean, really seeking it. I, I, or when you're at church, you know, you're at church, you're looking around and you see somebody who's by themselves and and you seek to go over and, and welcome them, say hello to them, greet them, ask them who, who they are, or how they're doing, whatever. You know, and I know it's, it's a little more difficult right now, isn't it, to show, seek to show hospitality because you're running, somebody's got a mask on, and we're trying to keep our distance, and it's a little more challenging, wouldn't you agree? And even our greeters are, are having to point people here and there and do things. Well, we still can... can Notice them and say hi to not hide behind a mask, okay, or hide behind our distancing. Rather seek to show it all. It's more challenging now to seek to include and love and show hospitality to people. It's more challenging now than it's ever been. But go for it, all right? Go for it. Um, there's a lot here. Uh, we have in uh, the book of Peter, Peter says this in his letter. <clears throat> it's in, in uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 9. Peter says, show hospitality to one another. Same idea, you know, love, love, each other, love the stranger. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling, he says. Without grumbling. <laughs> I mean, sometimes, sometimes uh, people aren't that easy to reach out to and love and care. And maybe if you have them in your house, for a while, it's a little difficult and, you know, strain, a little strain on you and you're kind of extending yourself. Do it without grumbling, you know. Uh, do it without murmuring, uh, sort of muttering under your breath, you know. Uh, do it, do it. Hey, this is how you offer your body a living sacrifice to God. You show love for the person that has a need. You contribute and you show hospitality and you don't murmur. You're more, you know, or, or complain. You're more th or grumble, but you're thanking God for the opportunity to love and to serve Him. As a matter of fact, Philippians chapter 2, verse 14 says this, Do everything, everything without complaining or arguing. Okay, do everything without complaining or arguing. Or in the English Standard Version, do all things without grumbling or disputing. Was that good for somebody here today? Huh? Somebody online? Do everything without grumbling or disputing. And when it comes to reaching out and serving, realize you might have to stretch and you may have to give yourself in ways that, uh, you know, um, inconvenience you. But love's willing to be inconvenienced for another person. And the power of God's Spirit's at work in you. Think of Jesus Christ who gave himself for us and served us. And so we're just, we're just emulating that. If somebody has a need, we're, we're willing to, to respond to it. If somebody needs to be included, uh, hospitality is to be rendered, we're willing to do that in every way, okay, to help them out. Uh, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 2 says this, Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, 
for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. That's fascinating. Okay? Don't neglect to show hospitality to strangers because some have entertained angels unaware. You can read in the Old Testament, Abraham, three men show up at his house, and they're angels, but they look like men. All right? Same thing happens with Lot. I mean, it's like angels in the Scripture have shown up as men, as people. All right? And so he just says, you know, they may be among us. They may have shown up here at church. Let's reach out to everybody and care about everybody so that, you know, in case we're entertaining angels, they can be uh, blessed by how we love them. All right, let me, um, let me just give you three principles here as we wrap up today's message. All right, three sort of application points. Here's the first one to, to remember. The church is a family, okay? The church is a family. Reread Romans 12, 3 to 8. It's the body of Christ that you've been called into. God called you to himself in Christ. When you heard the message of the gospel and you responded to it, God called you to himself. He also called you to the church family. The church family. We're to be participants in the church family. We're to use our spiritual gifts to build up the church family. We are to, when we see a need within the church family, we are to be involved, whether it's financially or bearing a burden or helping somebody out, whatever it is, showing hospitality, give them a place to stay, help them find a job, whatever we can do, give them a job. In the church family, you, we, we love one another as brothers and sisters. Everybody in the church family, that's what it is. I'll talk to you about this verse uh, in the next week or two. Romans 12, 16. Live in harmony with one another. Don't be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. I love that phrase, but associate with the lowly. I'm to be committed to the all everybody in the family of God. As I said, I said earlier, there, there are to be no cliques in the church. There, there, there are to be no, you know, my friends and, and his friends or her friends. They're friends. It's we associate with the lowly, everybody, all right? And so you're part of the church family. Got it? <clears throat> so we need this. And then secondly, the church is Christ's body, okay? It's a family. It's, the, it's Christ's body. Jesus is the head of the church. The pastor's not. The church board is not. The staff's not. Christ is the head, and we're the body, all right? Jesus Christ gave his life for the church. What am I saying to you in this? I'm saying that to this to you. Be committed to Christ's body, the church. You see, when we are functioning together by meeting each other's needs and loving one another as we should, the world sees Christ among us. It's, it's an amazing thing. If we're his body and members of it, when we're functioning and the church is loving one another and the power of the Spirit of God, people see Jesus here. And that's what we want. We want them to see Christ because when somebody who doesn't know the Lord comes to our church and visits and they see Christ, guess what? They're drawn to Him. Somebody said it this way, people are first drawn to Christians and then they're drawn to Christ. And so realize that the church is Christ's body and you're part of it. We're co-laborers with Christ in his field. And this is part of our, our ministry to one another. And then finally, let me just say this. The church is the hope of the world. The church is the hope of the world. I mean, this calling, I've been called to God. I've been called to his church. I've been called by God to reach out to this hurting, desperate world. A world that is in need of hope. You know, during these times with COVID-19 and all the, all the angst around the election and what's going to happen with the economy and all these things, I mean, it's been, it's been pretty overwhelming. And I know you probably feel it too. You feel just like, wow, these are tough times. Isn't it great that we can be in church together and love each other and pray for one another and support each other and know about trials and bear one another's birds, isn't that great? And we can seek our God who's among us, whom we love. We can pray to him. 
We can ask him for his strength, and we have those resources to go to when we're feeling overwhelmed. People in the world that aren't here at church, aren't online today, they have no one to go to. Okay, I mean, maybe they have their family, or maybe their family's just all divided up, or different parts of the country, or maybe they don't even have family. Where do they go? What do they do with their fears and their desperation? Who knows about their needs? Who cares about their needs? Who's responding to their needs? The church is the hope of the world. That's why I say anything you and I do to build up the church, the family of God, to strengthen it, to reach out beyond the four walls of the church to our neighbors and friends and love them in Christ's name and pray that they become part of the church. Anything we can do, that's it, because the church is the hope of the world. It is the hope of the world. And doesn't the world need some hope right now? God is God. He'll always be eternal God. His plans no one can thwart. God's existed in his glory before the world was created, before you cre were created. God existed in his magnificent glory. He's the beginning and the end. And people need to know him and hold on to him and have strength from him. So let, let us pray that the church indeed will be all God wants it to be, the salt and light of the world. The very thing that God uses, us, us, the very thing that God uses to reach out to people in need because God loves the people in this world who are lost. He loves them, and he's going to use us to reach out to him. I guess the bottom line is in this sermon, contribute to the needs of the saints. Be involved. Seek to show hospitality. Reach out, reach out, and love people because we need the church to be all it can be for this hurting world. Let's pray together. And Lord, we uh, come to you today. We pray for our community without you. They don't know you, so many that do not know you. They don't have a relationship with you. They're not part of the family of God as we are. They, they've never experienced the fellowship of the Holy Spirit or the, the presence of Christ or the love of a brother or sister for one another in Christ. They've never experienced the community, the fellowship of the church. We pray for them. We pray that somehow our online sermons or other online sermons can get to them and that they would hear the good news of the gospel and respond to you, God. Respond to you. So we do pray for our community, those who are hurting and hopeless, that they will come to know you. And maybe I'm talking to you today online right now, and you know, you, maybe you stumbled online or you've been watching a little bit, but you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you've never come into that relationship with him. Maybe you're afraid of that for some reason. I don't know. Afraid of what it might mean. Listen, God loves you. Don't be afraid. He sent his son to die for you. Come to Christ. Come to him. And just say in your own words, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins and Save me. Deliver me. I want to have a new, I want to have a relationship with you. I want to experience your strength. And let me talk to you. You're part of the church. We're in prayer right now. Would you make a fresh commitment to the family of God that you've been called to? We've, so, it's easy to just sort of, you know, take a uh, comfortable route and not be involved in people's lives and meeting needs. But that's not what God wants you to do. Christ will strengthen you to be his vessel, really, his vessel uh, to reach out to another person, love them. So would you commit yourself to the family of God and pray that the church will be protected and strong and growing and we'll get out of this season we're in of lockdowns and the church will, will reach out and evangelize like never before. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hey, if you just prayed with me to ask Jesus Christ to come into your life, on the screen you'll see the word believe. Text the word believe to the number that's on the screen there, and we'll get you some information right away and encourage you and build you up. And we'd love you to come to church. You know, we're outside. We've got a great setup here. Some of you maybe have not yet been able to come for whatever reason. 
Come on out. It'd be great to meet you in person and get to know one another. And you know there's small groups and continually at Spring Hills and all that. Check out springhills.org for all the information about our church. Then also on the screen right now is a way you can give. I want to thank you for your faithful giving. I want to thank you for the steps of faith you've taken, faith to give to God. It's good. You know, the scripture talks about us bringing in the very first of what God gives us, first fruits. You know, in the Old Testament, it was the harvest. Here comes the harvest of, of grain or of grapes or whatever it was. The harvest and the first tenth of that went to, to God, His glory, you know, the tabernacle, serving God, the first tenth. But it, was, it wasn't the last tenth. You know, it wasn't the what's left over after we sell the grain. What do we want to give to God? And I'm, um, you know, it's tempting to say, what can we afford? What can we afford? I want to challenge you with first fruits giving, where the first portion of what God gives to you, the first portion goes to God in His glory, all right? And you can set up recurring giving on our Spring Hills app so that, you know, you make a decision and you give and it's just recurring and it happens and you don't have to redo it every single month or think about it all the time all right so but thank you for giving and thank you for strengthening the church because the church is the hope of the world god use what we give right now as we give to you in worship and honor you we pray you'll use it and god it'll be our way of just demonstrating your first in our life and that we love you and we trust you to provide. We trust you with everything in our life. So use it to, to reach people and to encourage your church and strengthen your church. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
amen. Hey, if you became a Christian today, we want to know about it. Text BELIEVE to 707-505-9070. And when you do, one of our pastors is going to reach out to you to encourage you and celebrate that life-changing decision that you just made. We're so glad that every single one of you joined us for church today. We can't wait to see you back next weekend.